Hey kids, it's Pastor Jacob. I'm so glad you guys have been able to join us here on our online Bible study on Wednesday nights. Uh, listen, I'm excited as we travel through the Gospel Project and we see Jesus throughout the Scriptures and as, and as we learn more about how God interacts with His people. Today we're going to be looking at a lesson entitled, David Showed Mercy. David Showed Mercy, which I'm excited to share with you here in just a few moments. But before we get to that, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions I want to run by you as we begin to prepare our, prepare our hearts and our minds to respond to God's Word and to see what He has for us. So here's the question. How do you feel when you are wronged or treated unfairly? You know, some of you out there may get upset, you may get mad, you may get sad, you may want to retreat and just get away. There's all different types of emotions that we can have when we're treated unfairly or when we're wronged by somebody, and, and that happens sometimes. And so another question could be is how do you react? Do you, do you fight back? Uh, or how about this? Do you show mercy? And what we're going to learn in our Bible story today is these questions matter. Because the reality is, is that all of us are going to be wronged at some point in our life. We're going to be treated unfairly at some point in our life. And we have to learn how do we respond in those moments to where we can point people to God, we can point people to Jesus, and know that we can allow ourselves to glorify God and how we respond. So let's move on and let's see what we can learn. Hey kids, it's good to see you again. We're going to continue on with our Bible study. We've come to the portion of our Bible study where we want to uh, try to do some kind of interactive activity to help us to learn a little bit more about our Bible lesson for today. So the thing we want to do today is this. I want to start off by just saying something. You know, it's always fun to cheer for a team. You know, for me or for maybe a lot of you out there that live in Georgia, you know, you cheer for uh, the Georgia Bulldogs or the Atlanta Falcons. You've You've got two different teams there that are our local teams that we cheer for. Uh, maybe you cheer for them, maybe you cheer for somebody else. Uh, but how about this? We're going to play a game where we can cheer for one another. I'm going to cheer for you uh, as we play Rock, Paper, Scissors. Now, we're just going to have fun with this, and we're going to see. We're going to have to have an honorary system to see who wins or not. Uh, but let's play Rock, Paper, Scissors. Let's see who wins. You ready? All right, here we go. Get, get ready. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. All right, I did scissors, so if you have paper, I'm cutting. If you have a rock, you just won, okay? So if you got a rock, congratulations. Let's, let's try it again. We'll do it two more times. Rock, paper, scissors. All right, paper. So again, if you have scissors, you beat me. If you have a rock, I beat you. And so congratulations for the scissors out there. One more time. Rock, paper, scissors. All right, I got a rock. All right, so again, if you have uh, scissors, you lost. If you have paper, you beat me, so congratulations to you. Now you may be wondering, why are we talking about cheering each other on? But what we're going to see here in just a minute is, is that it's always fun, but what the Bible teaches us is that people cheered for David, King David, which we learned about last week. And they cheered for him because he defeated the giant called Goliath. And so, in fact, David won many more battles, and people sang songs about him to the point to where everybody began to notice this guy named David. And so this made, guess what, King Saul extremely jealous. He did not like the praise that David was getting because he felt like that David was stealing it from him. He didn't like the cheering. And so we're going to hear a little bit more about how Saul handles that and how David handles the situation as well here in just a few moments. Hey kids, it's Pastor Jacob again. We've come to the point in our Bible study where we want to talk about the Bible timeline. And remember, this is so, so important. We have to understand how to navigate through the scriptures to be able to gain all the truth that it has for us. Again, it's important for us to know the truth. So why? So we can do the truth. And it has to be in that order. If we don't know what to do, we're not going to do what God's called us to do. So it's important that we would fill our minds with God's truth and His, and His love so that we can act out what God has called us to do. Now let's just do a little bit of a review to see where we are in our Bible study for today. Now remember, when we started the Gospel Project, we started ultimately with Adam and Eve, but as we get a little bit closer to where we are now, we looked at Moses, and we know that Moses uh, was God's person that he chose to, 
to uh, allow the people to be free from Israel from from Egypt and to go into the one uh, go into the the wilderness to be able to travel. We know that after that that God chose Joshua to replace Moses and Joshua actually ended up taking a lot of the promised land that God promised to his people. And then we see there was a time called the judges. And at the time of the judges, the people kind of did their own thing, but God would uh, bring about a judge and a, really a, a warrior of some sort, and this judge would help uh, Israel to go back to God for short moments in history. And then we learned about the kings, and we learned about Saul and how Saul was uh, chosen by God. Uh, God allowed Saul to be the king. He wasn't a good king. He kind of did his own thing, but Samuel anointed him to do that. And then we see that uh, we were introduced to David just last week and how David killed Goliath. And now we're starting to see that there's beginning to be a problem. And we're seeing that David is probably a better king than Saul. And God is orchestrating events for David to be able to do that. But the question we have to ask is this. How is David going to interact with Saul? How is David going to, going to remain godly? And how is he going to have good character even though that he's going to be taking over Saul's position? So we're going to see that here in just a few moments. David was hiding in the wilderness. He had served King Saul and won many battles. But now, Saul was jealous of David and wanted to kill him. Saul took 3,000 men and went looking for David. David and his men were hiding in the back of a cave when Saul happened to pass by. Saul decided to go inside. David's men saw Saul and said, Look, God said he would hand your enemy over to you. This is the day. You can do whatever you want to him. David got close to Saul and secretly cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Saul didn't realize that David was there. David felt bothered about what he had done, and he told his men, I won't fight the king. God chose him. So David did not let his men fight against Saul. Then Saul left the cave and went on his way. David left the cave and called to Saul, My lord, the king! Saul turned around, and David knelt low before him. Why do you believe people who say I'm trying to hurt you? David asked. See, God handed you over to me today in the cave. I had a chance to kill you, but I showed mercy. David showed Saul the corner of the robe that he had cut. <gasps> I have done nothing against you, David said. God might punish you, but I will never harm you. Let God decide who is right and who is wrong. May he protect me from you. When Saul heard David's words, he cried. You are more righteous than I, Saul said, because you have done what is good to me, though I have done what is evil to you. Most people would kill an enemy, but you have let me go. May God reward you for your kindness. Saul realized God was with David, and he knew David would be the king of Israel. Promise me you won't kill my family, Saul said. So David promised. Then Saul went home, and David and his men returned to their hiding place. David showed mercy to Saul, his enemy, because David trusted God's plan. Jesus also trusted his father's plan. He died on the cross so his enemies could experience God's mercy and live forever as part of God's family. kids, it's Marky Mark. We've come to a time in our Bible study where we have to talk about the big picture question. Today, the big picture question is, how is Jesus the perfect king? Well, today the answer is, Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the king of kings. And he will rule as the king of kings forever. Dad! 
It's David. We've come to the time in our Bible study where we have to talk about the main point. The main point of today's Bible lesson is David showed mercy even though Saul hated him. We can learn a whole lot from how David responded. We can show mercy to other people as well. Amen. Hey kids, it's Justin. We've come to the time in our Bible study where we have to ask the question, who is the Bible all about? The Bible is all about Jesus. Well, in today's Bible story, we see that happening like this. David showed mercy to Saul, his enemy. David trusted God's plan. Jesus also trusted his father's plan. He died on the cross so his enemies could experience God's mercy and live forever as part of God's family. That's awesome! Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Today, Hannah from Sherwood, Arkansas asks, Why shouldn't we want revenge on people who have wronged us? Wouldn't that be fair for what they did? Hannah, you know it's hard when somebody does something wrong to us. I know there are times where somebody may do something really mean or hurtful, and, and it hurts us deeply, and it's hard to see them, especially at times when it seems like they've gotten away with it. But think about our Bible story today. In our Bible story, David had this chance to kill Saul. And think about all the, the bad, hard things that Saul had done to David. And he had this perfect opportunity. He could have gotten rid of Saul and all that would have been over with, but he didn't. Instead, he showed Saul mercy. And we can learn something from that, that we too have been called to show mercy, not though because David showed mercy to Saul, but because God has shown mercy to us. Here's the thing we have to remember, that we were enemies of God. We did wrong things to God. We wronged Him deeply. We rebelled against Him. We sinned against Him. We sought our fame rather than His. We did so many bad things to God. And God had every right to give justice toward us and to deal with us the way we deserve, but He didn't. He showed us grace, mercy, and kindness instead. So we deserve punishment but he gave us mercy and actually took our punishment and gave it to Jesus. So that right there should cause us to live with great humility. When others do something wrong to us, we know that we have not been wronged more than we have wronged God. So we want to pursue mercy and grace in our lives because of what God has given to us. But here's the other wrinkle that we have to keep in mind. God is a God of justice. And while it may not seem like that person that wronged us is being dealt with, we know, we can know for sure that God will bring justice into their lives at some point in some way, whether we see it or not. And so we can rest in knowing that we don't have to get justice for ourselves. God is better at it than we are and he will deal with it. So here's the question for you today. Who should you show mercy to this week? Hey kids, it's Pastor Jacob again. Listen, I hope you have enjoyed your time uh, on our online Bible study through the Gospel Project. I am excited every week to share with you what God's Word has for us. So we've come to the time in our Bible study where we have to think about the activity sheets that you guys have gotten. Uh, hopefully you have received those through an email uh, to your parents. And there's two activity sheets. And I would encourage you to work through those together with your mom and dad. And what you'll see is you'll learn a whole lot more about today's Bible story. Uh, we also want to take this time here in the next segment that's coming up to look at the gospel. Remember, the reason why we're here together, the reason why we go to church, the reason why we read God's word is to understand the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is that you and I have sinned, that Jesus has sent his son to die for our sins, to replace our sins with his holiness. And that if we place our faith in Christ, that God will look at that and say, you're forgiven of your sins. And we want to share that with as many people as possible. So here in the next few moments, you're going to see a video describing that. And if you've never accepted the gospel, I want to encourage you to watch that and think about it. Do I want to accept the gospel for me? 
And if you have accepted the gospel, I want you to watch this next segment and say, how can I learn how to share the gospel uh, in a more effective way with my friends and with my family and with people that God, God puts in my life? Listen, I love you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday here again on this video, and we're going to have a good time together. See you next time. Hi, I'm Tyler, and I want you to know that God loves you and has a plan for you. God knows your deepest thoughts and feelings, and he wants to have a relationship with you. The Bible has a lot to say about God's plan and how you can have a relationship with God by trusting Jesus. So I'm here to tell you the gospel, the good news about Jesus, and explain how you can become a Christian. The first thing you need to know is that God rules. The Bible tells us God created everything, including you and me. God is in charge of everything. There is nothing that is outside of his control. The next thing you need to know is that we have sinned, every single one of us. Since the time of Adam and Eve, every person that has ever lived has chosen to disobey God. The Bible calls this sin because God is holy. God cannot be around sin. Sin separates us from God and deserves God's punishment of death. That's the bad news. But wait, the Bible also has good news. God provided a solution to our sin problem. God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to rescue us from the punishment our sin deserves. That's something we as sinners could never earn or do on our own. Jesus alone saves us from our sin. Another thing you need to know is that Jesus gives. Jesus lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins and rose from the grave. He's still alive today. Because Jesus gave up his life for us, we can be welcomed into God's family now and forever. This is the best gift ever. So how do we respond to this good news? We can receive the gift of salvation that Jesus offers us. The Bible tells us exactly how to do it. The letters A, B, and C can help us remember how God wants us to respond to his good news. A, B, C stands for admit, believe, and confess. First, Admit to God that you're a sinner. The Bible says we all are sinners and that we need to repent. To repent means to turn around, to change direction, to turn away from our sin. Tell God you're sorry for your sins and trust him to forgive you. Second, believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and received his gift of forgiveness from sin. And third, confess. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. That means that you tell God and others that you've trusted Jesus to be your Savior and to be in charge of your life. The ABCs can help you remember how to become a Christian. But trusting in Jesus is something that's a really big deal. And that's very personal between you and God. So if you want to know more about it, talk to your mom or your dad, or a grandparent, or a teacher, or your pastor. I know any of them would love to help you understand more about what it means to receive God's gift of forgiveness from sin.